So you've been breaking all of the rules about exceptions. You've been sprinkling try catch with empty exception handlers all over your code base, and yet there are still some exceptions that are crashing your program. What can you possibly do to catch these exceptions? Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. No, I'm not recommending that you put try catches around everything in your code base, but of course, as we are building more bigger and complex applications, there are situations where you want to be able to have global exception handling. So in this video, I want to introduce to you some concepts that you can put into place in your applications to have global exception handlers. This could be really helpful for telemetry and logging, and that way when you have distributed applications, you can get more insights when your application is doing something that you don't expect. A quick reminder that if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. Now, let's jump over to Visual Studio and throw some exceptions. All right, on my screen, I have a pretty sad program. This is just going to throw an invalid operation exception and says, oh no. Of course, if we go run this application, as you might expect, right away, it crashes, right? This is not new or surprising to us. And of course, what we would probably want to do if this was somewhere in an application where this exception could be thrown, right? Obviously, we wouldn't just want to throw it and catch it. But if you needed to catch something like this, you would just wrap it in a try catch, of course, right? You would have this around the whole thing. So try catch, you'd put whatever type of exception filter you'd want and this would live inside here, right? So this would allow you to catch the exception. Again, not very surprising, but applications get a lot more complex than just a single line that throws an exception. We do have the ability to put a global exception handler in place, and I'm not suggesting that you do this to somehow try and recover your application necessarily, but this can be really good as a last stand to try and get some information before your application is torn down. The way that this looks is that we can use the app domain, current domain, and then put an unhandled exception event handler on top of this. And that way, when this gets triggered, which is again, when an exception is thrown, that's as you might expect, not handled, we will get this event handler fired. And if you're not familiar with event handlers, this is basically just a delegate and it uses the special syntax, it's plus equals. And that way you can actually chain event handlers together. So you could essentially, if you needed to, for some reason, you could do another one of these after and you could plus equals onto it and do another thing like that, right? So these actually get chained together, but we're not doing that in this example. I just wanted to be able to show you that you can hook up this event handler and do what you would need to do inside of here. In this example, we're just gonna write some information out to the console, but if you had a web application or something else that was running and distributed, you might say, hey, we gotta write to the, the log file. We have to try and do some last attempt at getting some telemetry up so that we have information about this crash. There are all sorts of different things that you might want to do, but I highly recommend that, you know, trying to necessarily recover your application when it's already in this state where who knows what's happening, probably not gonna be super trivial to do, probably not a great option, but having some attempt at getting extra information. So when you wanna go diagnose this, I think that could be a good approach. If we go run this now, what we should be able to see is we press play and we get the exception thrown, but you might've noticed very quickly, right? We do see system invalid operation exception. So if I put these together here, I'll zoom in a little bit too. You can see we get the exception object. So that's the first one right here. That's that line. And then we get the trace right below it. So when we print out the whole exception object, this is essentially the two string coming from uh, args.exception object on line three, and then is terminating is the very next line. So this is terminating, it is going to crash the application. And that way, if I go ahead and press F5 to continue, right, the application is done executing. So it's kind of cool, you end up getting to intercept when this is happening, right? The debugger was still attached, the application actually had not exited yet, but we did get this event handler triggered. So you get this last opportunity to try and log something, send telemetry. But like I said, recovery, probably not a great option because who knows what is happening. But before we continue on, this is just a quick reminder that I do have courses available on Dome Train. If you're just getting started in your programming journey and you want to learn C Sharp, you can head over to Dome Train. I have a getting started in C Sharp course. It's approximately five hours of content taking you from absolutely no experience to being able to program in C Sharp. And after that, I have my deep dive course, which will take you to the next level with another six hours of content so that you can start building basic applications. Head over to Dome Train and check it out. Let's head back to the video. I want to talk about something else next because it's very common now that we are doing async await in our applications, we're using tasks and things like that. 
But there are situations where we can have tasks do something totally nasty, and we have a task that is running, not being awaited for some reason, and has an exception being thrown. When this type of thing happens, you can have some really weird, unexpected behavior in your application if it's not crashing your app outright. In this example, I wanted to show you that I have a task being run here. It's not being awaited. You can see that Visual Studio is actually telling us like, hey, you probably aren't doing what you think you want to do here. And that's because it's not being awaited. Now, you don't necessarily have to await a task. It's just that more often than not, you probably do. You probably do need to make sure that this task is running, being tracked, and being able to be cleaned up later. So what this example will do is it's going to run this task, and after three seconds, it's going to throw an exception, right? So this is going to go run on a different thread, and then I have this wild true loop here, and basically every five seconds, it's just going to wake up and wait again. So it's just going to keep the application alive. So if we go ahead and run this now, we should see that if we count to one, two, three, it'll throw an exception. And what we can see here is if I press continue, the application's still running, right? So if you had something running on a task somewhere and it threw an exception, this is basically going completely unnoticed. Not a great thing, right? So if you had some behavior that you were truly waiting for on this task, what's actually happening, right? Are we still waiting for this thing to finish? Did it finish processing and writing some data somewhere? Or is it just gone and we have no idea what the state is, right? It's the latter. We have no idea what's up. I mean, we do because we saw it actually throw the exception, but I think you get the idea. If this kind of thing happens in your application, what should you be expecting to do if you want to catch and deal with this type of thing? Now, of course, the obvious thing you might say is, well, just go ahead and await this, do the right thing. That's going to change the behavior in this case. And like I said, you may have situations where you do have tasks running for whatever reason. I can't predict everything that you want to do, but if this happens and you want to have this type of behavior, because if I go put this back in and I go do this again, what happens? Exceptions thrown, but notice our current domain unhandled exception handler did not fire. That little trick that we put in to say, hey, we should catch exceptions when the application is about to crash. Nope, that's not triggering. So it's not enough to catch these types of things on tasks. But there is yet another handler that we can go use to help us here. And here we go. It's very similar. But on the task scheduler, we can use unobserved task exception. Very same or similar, at least, idea here where we have event handler syntax with a sender and some event arguments. The event arguments in this case are a little bit different. We have the exception and then whether or not it's been observed. We can go check this out and run it and see what happens. So let's go see. Exceptions thrown. But wait a second. Nothing got printed to the console. Why did that happen, right? We got to see that we have this handler up here at the top. We know that's not triggering it because we already ran that. And then we added this other one. So we have both event handlers hooked up, right? We have the first one, but we know that wasn't going to work because we already saw us run and that wasn't being triggered. And then we added this other one for the unobserved task exception. That's supposed to help us here. But why didn't it? Why didn't it go run this code inside of this event handler from line 10 to 14 when that's really what it's supposed to be doing for us? And that's because the garbage collector didn't run. And that's only going to trigger this when the garbage collector runs and realizes that it has a task that it needs to go clean up and there were some uncaught exceptions. So there's something we can do just to simulate this. If we put a garbage collector collect in here, if we go run this now, we should see the behavior that we're expecting. There's the exception being thrown and the garbage collector ends up running after five seconds. And we can see that we have the same type of information being printed out. We can see that we're writing out the arguments exception, and that's going to be this information all here with the trace. And then it is observed is set to false in this case. This will allow us to, again, get that kind of last effort stand on this task. It's not crashing the application, right? But we can get this last attempt before the task is cleaned up to say, hey, what's going on here? Something was unobserved. Maybe we should go log some information, send some telemetry, do something about this. So these are two different strategies that you can use separately or together in your applications if you want to be able to get some extra information in scenarios where your application is crashing or doing something unexpected. 
The first instance that we looked at was when your app is truly crashing and you have this last stand to try and log some information when the app is being torn down. And the other one is specific to tasks. And if those tasks have unobserved exceptions when the garbage collector is coming around to clean them up, that's when that other handler will go run. If you found this helpful and you want to learn more about different exception handling patterns, you can check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.